This paper received a Best Paper Award, so let's congratulate the author. Um, hello, so I'm Artem, and um, this is uh, Rovable, so miniature on-body robots as mobile wearables. Uh, this work was done in collaboration between three groups, um, me and Joe Paradiso from the Responsive Environments Group at the Media Lab, um, Cindy Kao, Debbie Agilo and Chris Schmidt at uh, Living Mobile Group, and um, Sean Former, Inrak Choi, and Maggie Shu at um, Mechanical Engineering in Stanford um, University Shape Lab. Um, so as we, <coughs> as the technology improves, the electronics are getting smaller and more energy efficient, which allows us to move from things such as the smartphones closer to our bodies, such as <coughs> into even like fabrics and now even electronic tattoos. Um, but this future doesn't, um, doesn't have any possibility of mobile wearables. All the wearable technologies are, you put them on the skin, on a, I mean anywhere, and they just stay there. But um, there is other space where wearable technology can be um, dynamic and uh, mobile. So uh, in this project, we asked a simple question. What if the wearable devices could uh, move around the body? And this would allow us things such as uh, just to justify like more seamless universes, un interfaces than the current wearables. So the um, wearable devices can um, appear and disappear on, on demand. Um, also, this would allow continuous more um, in, can better sensing because a lot of times the location of the sensor is very important. So the, ro the robots can find the right location and position themselves. Um, and also they can um, actually, uh, unlike the wearable technologies now, they can act on, the, on their environment, such as the clothing or the human body. And they can, um, they can maintain themselves because they can move and they can, for example, find the power source. Um, so the, we, um, we came up with this um, kind of inspired by insects, small insects. We, we have this um, design criteria for the engineering part, so the robot should be small, so people, um, they're very um, unobtrusive to the human wearer. Also, they should be able to move around freely on the human clothing. They should be autonomous, so the person who wears them doesn't need to um, worry about them, and they can go throughout the day doing uh, different tasks, and this should be um, a platform so people can uh, experiment with it and add uh, more functionality. Um, so with that, we, we designed the Rovables, which is a mobile uh, platform for wearable, um, wearable mobile electronics. So, and this is um, kind of low-cost um, prototyping tool, and it has a, um, it's their low-cost and they're um, untethered, so they have all the uh, onboard functionality, and they can move um, on uh, fabric in any, um, any direction. Um, so let's look at uh, some previous work. Um, there's been some work on the locomotion in the robotics um, uh, conferences and uh, papers, such as uh, on fabrics and uh, on clothing. Um, there was a few papers. Uh, also, uh, there, there haven't been much work in HCI um, community on the wearable robots, and these are just a few examples. And um, so our um, our design uh, is, um, we haven't seen any like small um, wearable robots which, um, and we haven't seen anybody actually explore the, the interaction space and applications of such um, devices yet, either in HCI or in robotics. Um, so it's, let's look at the implementation. Uh, so the movement um, mechanism we used was, um, we had a magnet on the, the robot body, and there is a magnet on the back which allows the robot to stay, um, stay in place on the fabric without any expanding any um, energy. And here is a picture of um, the closer look of the mechanics. Um, so we can, you can see there's three wheels. Um, so those wheels are basically, um, they're just strong neodyne, uh, neodymium magnets. Um, and they, they stick to each other, uh, and there is um, a rubber tire which gives it more friction, so the wheels don't slip. And you can see on the wheel, on the, uh, there is a reflective um, pattern which um, allows to track the, the rotation of the wheels for uh, localization, which will show um, you in a little bit. And also we, on the other picture, on, 
Um, on the back of the robot, you can see there is two motors. Uh, so we used a small planetary gear motor, which allows uh, for uh, high torque, so they can move um, kind of up and up and down and fight against the gravity. Um, so the robot was uh, untethered. It contained everything on board. So we had the 2.4 gigahertz um, radio to communicate to the, the base station and the computer, and we used a kind of ad hoc network. Um, and so we had an IMU for also to help with localization, three-axis gyroscope and three-axis uh, accelerometer. Um, and we had an expansion port so we can add different uh, shields on top of the, the robot and extend the functionality. And um, as a main, the processor was an 80 mega 328 microcontroller. Um, and as a, under the circuit board, you can see the picture on the side, there is a battery, 100 milliamp hour lithium polymer. Uh, and this is just an example of the things you can add to the robot, such as uh, we designed the LED shield uh, with 60 LEDs. And this is uh, actually on the back side. There is um, also infrared LED in infrared proximity sensors on each side of the um, of the shield. So if you have two shields, they can find when they are and they can dock with each other. And there is also two mag magnets so they can align precisely to each other. And we'll show you uh, it is an application soon. Um, the energy consumption was um, was about 45 minutes continuously running with the encoders and the motors which consume the most um, energy. And it can be up to 12 hours if the motors and encoders are not running and the robots are sending the data continuously at 10 hertz um, to, the, to the computer uh, from the sensors. Um, and some, um, here's some, some interactions that we, we um, came up with. So we had um, kind of basic, basically three different categories. Um, sensing, actuation, and interfaces. And we envision um, these robots would um, do different things from those different categories throughout the day, not just one specific thing, but they can mix and match um, as they need to, uh, depending on the context. Um, so like sensing, um, the sensors, for a lot of sensors, the location is very important, such as the EKG or uh, for body motion tracking. So here we are using um, I am used to kind of position with a position on the arm, like upper arm and the lower arm, which allows um, with a IMU they can track the, the arm accurately then. On the, as you can see on the computer, uh, using the inverse kinematics model. And you, and you can imagine that this robot could um, go all over the body, like to do um, full body motion tracking, maybe when they sense you're doing like sports or, um, or some, and, uh, they can give like calorie feedback or um, or maybe how the motion um, give you feedback how you well you did for training. Um, also, they can be as a um, give you tactile feedback anywhere on the body. So in our um, example, we designed a linear tactor which um, kind of pokes uh, the person on the skin. Um, and um, you can also imagine this, this can work also as a dragging tactor, so you can kind of give you a dragging sensation on the skin for different, um, um, tech for different applications um, of notifications maybe. Um, it can also uh, move, move the clothing around. So here we have a, a scarf, the robot is moving a scarf, so maybe if the person gets cold, the robot can um, you know, wrap the scarf around the neck. Um, and uh, you can, they can also do uh, self-maintenance. So here the robot is equipped with a NFC coil, wireless charging coil, so you can, uh, it's the back from the view, from the back, and, um, the, and it can charge itself, like just, um, it can sense where the coil is. Um, so you can imagine maybe in the future the robot can have a, uh, if you're wearing a cell phone in your pocket, you can just find where the cell phone is and feed off the NFC from the cell phone. Uh, so it can work um, without charging kind of on its own. Um, there's a lot of interesting interface kind of applications. So the robots can serve as a normal uh, kind of variable, um, current variable devices, but also, but um, they can also be more seamless so they can um, like hide and appear on demand. 
So maybe like in this case, you, uh, the robot has a display, which I showed earlier. It has a, like a watch. So maybe when you need a watch, the watch can appear on your arm in the right location. Um, also, you can have a display. So here, um, the two robots kind of link to each other to n name a bigger uh, name tag. Um, and you can have a, like this for like name tags or aesthetic purposes. Maybe you can imagine like you know hundreds of those smaller um, robots. And also they can uh, provide like um, input anywhere in the body. So here the jewelry piece is becoming um, a microphone. When somebody is calling you, it will like go to your shoulder, so you can um, talk to it um, kind of quietly and more uh, with more privacy. Um, so one of, one of the like important aspects was how to make it um, autonomous, which was a um, difficult. It's a difficult uh, problem, so we have to solve like localization problems and there's the navigation problems on the fabrics. Um, so uh, we um, so here is a an example of our algorithm. So on the test bed, uh, vertical piece of fabric, the robot is. Um, Kind of, it can say it sends the location, its location to the computer, and it can um, track with the onboard uh, sensors. Uh, and what we use the combination of um, odometry, which is using the wheel um, infrared encoders and for distance, and we use the um, IMU to get the rotation angle because the encoder they can slip, but the rotation is more accurate. And using um, kind of dead reckoning, which is um, um, relative navigation, like using just simple trigonometric function, functions, we can um, estimate where it is based on its um, initial, um, know the initial location. Uh, and this also works for uh, multiple um, robots, so it can be as, uh, as many as, um, you know, any number of them. And all, uh, here's a um, more example of like uh, autonomous uh, navigation, so you click, uh, like clicking on a different um, Place on the on the fabric, you can you can uh, it will try to go to the place autonomously. And it, uh, the navigation can also be extended into a three-dimensional space because the fabric is basically um, two-dimensional, but it's um, uh, kind of it just the shape is different, but the it, it's conserved the the shape is conserved. So you can use the texture map of the two-dimensional texture map and. Um, kind of navigate there and find the corresponding three-dimensional uh, vertices um, in the 3D space. So in the future work, we have a lot of things uh, to do, such as be interesting to do more like um, engineering and improve uh, and make it actually into like insect-like swarm um, of small robots. So there is like mobility, how we can make it um, you know, m more efficiently, maybe using some kind of bio-inspired technique of like Geico, um, Geico's feed uh, method, or uh, also improving the autonomy. We did a kind of very simple um, autonomous operation right now, but there's a lot of room to improve and like accuracy. Also, the size, how we can make them smaller. The current limitation is the motors can be, um, but we'll, we found some motors which are about the s twice the current size of the motors, and we are exploring that. And manufacturability, if we have to make like a swarm of them, how can we? do it in a factory reliably instead of doing it by hand. Um, so there is a lot of interesting applications in um, like, a, like arts and fashion, so um, kind of inspired by Hussein Ch Chalayan's work in transforming clothing, we can um, even take this concept um, farther. Also medicine, like if you can make those, um, the robots um, even, like move, not, maybe not even on the fabric, but on the skin, we can um, have really truly like um, good sensing on the body, such, such as we can send the EEG, or um, we can the robot can move around with the camera to find like skin cancer maybe, or to perform a physical exam, autonomous physical exam, uh, such as the, the picture here. We have a stethoscope, but you can have this microphone and a robot also. Um, and there is also HCI um, things such as. Uh, it would be interesting to do workshops to see what people can um, do with it, how um, how easy it is to use, um, also usability, how um, practical they are, and um, it's also important to consider the perception and culture of those and um, kind of cultural norms in different places 
and how people would um, react. You know, it can be very, um, for some people, maybe invasive, like with the things moving on their on their bodies. Um, so, in conclusion, um, we asked the question: What if um, the wearable devices could move around in the beginning? And um, there is two parts that we looked into in this question: is how. So, and this is the engineering part: is it actually um, possible to do this um, technologically? And we said uh, we we implemented. So, yeah, yes, it's possible, and we've met the design um, considerations that we uh, we proposed in the beginning. So technically, it's feasible, and also um, why? Why? So we looked into uh, applications and um, design space to um, kind of find the justification. So we, and here is just a recap. So we can have um, seamless interfaces, um, which can appear and disappear. We can uh, do very uh, much more um, better sensing than what we can do with like Fitbits right now or. Um, current wearable devices. Um, the robots can act on the environment unlike any other um, current wearable devices, which might be interesting. Um, and also they can do uh, self-maintenance so that the human doesn't need to worry anymore about, about them. Um, and kind of, um, in the future, we, can, we want this to be kind of relationship between the, the wearable um, robots and the human, kind of like symbiosis that we see in um, in biological organisms between the two organisms, and which means um, it's like a beneficial relationship, um, mutually beneficial relationships between two organisms. Um, and uh, I would like to acknowledge the following people who helped with the project, and um, thank you. So I'd like to start with a question. Um, you talked a lot about sensing and also the motion. Uh, it seems like when you're talking about clothing, the sensing will happen on the insides of the clothing while any, let's say, display or anything for the user to be aware of needs to happen on the outside. Did you consider how to build a robot that would have, let's say, one side on the outside, one side on the inside? You already have a magnet rolling inside yeah, yeah. the shirt. I would like to, yeah. Uh, yeah, to do this. Yeah, you can put something else on the other side, but um, we didn't do it because it's like difficult. How do we like couple them? Because they're not like we can't attach them to each other right now. So we're um, actually we're interested in like how we can actually put them on the skin also directly for sensing. I think that would be like um, the fabric is a little bit hard because like it's not always in like good contact with your body, but. If you have it directly on the skin, they might be. But this is more like for the, I think, for the HCI and kind of interaction, like wearable devices uh, perspectives. Uh, so sensing is um, it's a little bit harder with this kind of of the body. Uh, thanks. Hi, <coughs> Robert Kovacs from Hasso Partner Institute. Very inspiring work. Thanks. Uh, one idea for sticking for the skin, if you would wear, wear a tight cloth, like a swimming suit or wetsuit. Uh, have you thought about integrating this with uh, Project Jacquard to, to have some kind of data lines in the clothes and communication with mm -hmm. it could help for, for mm -hmm. positioning the robots and other things? Yeah, uh, yeah that's, a, that's a interesting. Um, uh, we didn't like, pro we were thinking about like having something in the clothing, but um, like ideally, you would not you wouldn't need anything on the on the clothes itself, so you can use like any kind of like normal clothing. But um, yeah, like you probably need some kind of patterns, like maybe reflective patterns or the capacitors, you know, for um, yeah. So we we just ha we haven't done like that much with the clothing itself, but yeah, probably for like really practical and accurate um, like use, you would probably need something because it's really hard to find the location of the robot, like. Just on the fabric, it's like it's still unsolved problem in in like robotics and um, yeah, even in like any robotic conference is still a big topic. Um, so yeah, it would be interesting, I think. To... Um, question here, uh, to your to your right, right in front, to your right, the speaker. Sorry, can you stand up? I should stand up. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, uh -huh. So the use of the magnet uh, was very clever. Uh, but it takes a lot of uh, difficulties away from your work. It holds it up, it doesn't fall off, it doesn't have to be powered. 
have you thought of alternate ways of doing the same uh, movement without magnet as the basis? Or in other words, is it the first thing you started with or were you looking at alternate options for mobility on cloth? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we tried like a bunch of different ways. Um, you know, like may even like having kind of channels on your clothes, like so they can kind of like pull in the, in the channels, go up and down the channels. Uh, also, like yeah, we like magnetic fabrics and um, yeah, but this um, and without the magnet in the back um, and Velcro kind of material also, um, which with the and wheels have this you know also Velcro, uh, but this way it just worked uh, much. Uh, much better so far, um, as we know. There's probably better ways to do it, like using like Geico feed kind of material, you know, like insects. Insects can go up anything without any problems. So, um, but our like technology is still not not there yet. Like even material science is not advanced enough for, to make it practical. So maybe in the future um, soon. Let's thank the speaker again.